I don't know what's going on with the white balance right now, but I look like a vampire. Hello, audience, and welcome to another versus video here on the channel. Today, we're gonna be doing First Law versus The Witcher series. Two heavyweights for the fantasy genre, both widely loved and respected by fans, but which one comes out on top. Well, like most versus videos, this is actually just kind of a way to pitch both series and examine the strengths and weaknesses of each over each other, but there's not really a better one. It's more just a, hey, which one do you want to read more first kind of framing? <gasps> but I put in a versus video for clicks, views, and that's how this works, because YouTube, I need to make a living money, haha. -ha. And this video is brought to you by an online learning community called Skillshare. Skillshare is the place you can go to learn, make your big brain bigger, get smarter, faster with just the cost of like a streaming service a month when you use the yearly plan. What exactly does Skillshare offer? Pretty much everything. Look at this guy. He's teaching you how to liven up your apartment with plants. Christopher, you've changed my vibe. Stop watching the same shows again and again on Netflix. Instead, you can learn more to better yourself as an individual, whether it's starting a new career, picking up a new hobby, or just maybe an industry you're curious to learn the ins and out of. Skillshare is the platform for you to sign up for to just dive on in. I genuinely know people, I really do in life, who have new careers now because they signed up for Skillshare. So if you want to take yourself from a regular little goblin to a big brain goblin, all you have to do is be one of the first 1,000 to click the link in the description and you will get a free trial of Skillshare share premium today. Back to the video. But let's go ahead and start with the first category of the day, and that is going to be character. Now, looking at The Witcher first, we have one of my favorite characters in all of fantasy, Geralt of Rivia taking the spotlight. He is an absolute primo primo example of how to do a fantasy protagonist well without him being cliche in the least. Geralt is someone you can somehow relate to, yet he remains kind of pulled back in refrain. He's this badass, he's human, he's stoic and flawed, but always able to overcome any challenge. The series is not overly dependent on him though. His entire cast backing him up is quite engaging and interesting, filled with their own mini arcs. Whether it's Ciri, Triss, Yennefer, or Regis, you are going to be invested in nearly every prime and supporting character the Witcher series has to offer. Mad respect for being able to pull that off. It's no small feat. I have never once during the entire Witcher series felt that the character was unnecessary that was introduced. But the Witcher's coming up against first law for this category and anyone who's been paying attention to how I feel about this series and the channel knows where this point is going to go. It seems like each and every character introduced in the first law series has as much nuanced thought and development put into them as the main character from the Witcher. Joe Abercrombie's characters throughout the entire first law series are consistently just a blast to the face of great ideas executed to magnificent effect and they're all going to draw you in to invest in them emotionally, even if you are simultaneously repulsed by them. Even people I know who hate Grimdark read First Law because they become so invested in the characters, they just get over it and maybe they'll skim the parts they don't like. I don't know how they handle it. But yeah, it's no question for me this first point is going to go to First Law. But we're going from both of these series' strongest suit to, in my opinion, both of their weakest. That is going to be plot. First Law's plot is a bit rough for me at the beginning, but it does get better and better as the series moves on. The first book, some people even make the criticism that it doesn't have much of a plot. It's more just an introduction of characters. While I don't take my criticism that far, it's certainly not nearly to the forefront of the text that we get from later First Law entries that have a bit more strong, rock-solid narrative balance with just the character work. It's gotten to the point where I would even say in Joe Abercrombie's latest trilogy, The Age of Madness, I am equally invested in the characters as I am the narrative, and he hasn't really sacrificed character work at all. So he's found his balance. He's improved in this aspect, in my opinion opinion. And yeah, I love seeing that from First Law. But can First Law overcome a weak beginning for The Witcher's overall story? That becomes difficult. Because for me, as I've gotten further and further away from my experience of reading The Witcher, the story has kind of faded from my mind. And I think that's for a couple reasons. It's not a poorly told story by any stretch of the imagination. But it's definitely not the most engaging part of that series. I think nearly everyone is there for either the world building or characters, and the stories themselves, whether it's in the short stories or the overarching grander narratives that are happening around Ciri and Geralt, it kind of just feels secondary at times. It's not bad. I definitely want to maintain that. It just doesn't stand out in a way I think a lot of the other features to The Witcher do. So does Witcher's kind of overall middle-level storytelling, in my opinion, when you average all out, 
overcome first law's stumbling beginning and then rise to greatness. In my opinion, no, I'm also gonna give this second point to first law. It's just more interesting to me looking back on it, especially with the standalones, they've had some of the most interesting, engaging storylines that blend oh so well from the characters and with Abercrombie, it's always driven by character. And one of my pet peeves is things being driven by destiny and characters just kind of following along and Witcher has fallen into that problem at times and it just kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't dislike the Witcher's story. It just absolutely does not stand out to me in the same way that the First Law ones have, especially later on in the series. So while First Law may have started a bit weaker, it's now walking in a whole other league. The building of the world. Here we have a pretty strong 180 in the direction we're going because First Law's world, well, I think it absolutely takes the cake when it comes to atmosphere, doesn't really go beyond much of just minimal at most. Witcher, on the other hand, is a straight up high fantasy with multiple other races, warring nations, magic systems, uh, political intrigue going on. It's not even really a comparison here. Well, I do think there are certain cherry picked elements from First Law's world, Overall, a Witcher takes the cake here. If we're coming at it from a fantasy lens, which we are for these versus videos, it's no question. And I know there are fantasy fans out there who are not interested in fantasy stories that do not have an intense magic system they can become invested in. And the Witcher provides that in spades. Well, the first law, it's left to a very kind of vague, yeah, that's... It's there. I mean, I've had long discussions with people about how the creation of witchers for the continent in the series is such an interesting, intriguing part of its history and how it kind of blends into this character we're following now just adds so much to him. There isn't really much from First Law's world you can talk about to that extent. Characters all day and the current goings on of the world, yeah. But in terms of crafting a fantasy epic with all this stuff, there's just no comparison. Pros. This is going to come down almost entirely to personal preference. The pros of these two are on such extreme opposite ends of the spectrum. Witcher is this flowery, hmm, delicious, well-crafted field of meadows. Well, not really detracting from the tone, it's just kind of flowery written. And then on the other end, we have Joe Abercrombie's writing, which is like a knife to the gut in the dark, I would say. It's just dry, straightforward, and brutal. Witcher is flowery, here's a knife. Which do you prefer? I mean, there's the Rothfuss fans, and then there's the Pierce Brown fans. It comes down to which one are you more in the mood for? And these are not, you know, exclusive. You can't just be a fan of one and not the other. It's really gonna come down to what are you in the mood to read? And both are equally respectable approaches to the craft, in my opinion. Beauty and simplicity and truth to your writing is something that authors struggle to find a balance with. It can come across overly dry if poorly handled, which Abercrombie has never fallen into. And flowery writing can detract from tone or screw with your pace big time if mis handled, and I don't think Sapkowski has ever failed in that sense. I'm calling this one a tie. They're both kind of at the top tier of what they're doing. It's just too far apart to really say which one's better because one's not better than the other. Now, an interesting category I want to introduce specifically for this video is success and mainstream viability because these two series are at extremely different points for this. Obviously, just getting this out of the way up front, Witcher takes it for now. Witcher has an ongoing show that's had quite a bit of success for Netflix, one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. It's no question, it gets the point here. But looking over at First Law, I'm left wondering about the future because I do think First Law would make an extraordinary adaptation to pretty much any medium. A video game that's very much so about the political intrigue and characters I could see capturing quite a large audience. A TV show? Yes. <laughs> it's funny how the default now is TV show, not movie. So I want to go ahead and toss this point to The Witcher, but it leaves me with a question for you, the audience. Do you think the first Law series has a chance to overtake The Witcher in terms of its mainstream success? Or has the fantasy bubble formed and it will pop before First Law has an opportunity to do so because we have not seen anything really coming out about the series being adapted. So if anything's going to happen, it'll be too late. It's actually probably one of the most interesting discussions that I consistently encourage people to have this channel and I'm always seeing new takes as to why or why not things are going to be too late. Right now I'm kind of in the camp of genre burnout isn't really a thing. People enjoy a good show. The only thing that can happen is oversaturation, which is different than burnout. So maybe First Law just needs to wait a good while and come back in 10 years when a lot of these fantasy shows have died out. It's just an interesting thing to talk about. Now the final category I want to get into here is theme, which is suffering from a different kind of difference 
than the prose was because I do feel like with the Witcher series and First Law have a similar vision, a similar image of what human beings are. We are monsters. I mean, within the Witcher series, it's discovered that like, oh my God, humans are almost like an invasive species brought into this land. Like we are not meant to be there. But in First Law, we're a monster in a different way where it's just about our innate desires, greeds, you know, those dark voices inside of us we have to resist obeying. But, you know, is that just me? That's Never mind, moving on. Now, The Witcher further expands on ideas of destiny and a lot of what you come to expect from fantasy in its theming. Free will, people trying to resist their destiny, eventually falling into line. You have a lot of examinations around like what we perceive as evil versus what really evil is. And I enjoy all of that. But over in First Law, it seems like a more pure examination of these themes because of the fact, and I hate to say this as a fantasy fan, but because the fantasy is held back, it's held in check, and the people are always at the forefront of the narrative. They're always what's driving it, and that allows Drew Abercrombie with his pen to be more pure with the ideas explored. See what I'm saying? Like the introducing something like destiny, introducing something where it's almost outside of the people's control and a lot of what you're pushing forward is an examination of the morality of human beings. There's this layer of murkiness that I don't dislike as a reader. I still love pretty much everything about The Witcher in that aspect. But if I have to pull away enjoyment, it seems like First Law has an edge. So I will give this point to First Law again, but it, it's a little bit of a wiffle waffly point because I know there are gonna be some people who disagree with me on that and say, hey, there are themes through destiny that are talked about. I understand that, but for me, I don't connect with those things. So the themes almost feel like it's for the characters and not for me, the reader, which again, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. It's going to be a very subjective, like, okay, that element I don't relate to. Well, other people who do, I don't know, very much so believe in destiny in the real world or something could connect with it. I just don't. And I feel like I take away more from Joe Abercrombie's work with overall larger ideas. And so we have our winner. But that has been another versus video here on the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Would you like to see this series make a return or no? Channels move beyond it, let it die. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, David. Eads, Vert, and Jen Mafasanti.